welcome back. The channel that keeps giving. So I did this film on the uh, Van Allen belts and uh, there was an early program to fire atomic bombs up into the Van Allen belts to make them energetic and possibly make a shield that would cause um, electronics to fail, radar to fail, and possibly even burn up incoming nuclear warheads. And it was very early on and it was about the time when Van Allen actually named these belts which surround the Earth of charged particles. And the project was cancelled and that was the end of my film. <laughs> it turned out not to be the end of the project. Fantastic viewer says, Professor, it didn't end there. He points me to Project Orion. I've seen a couple of bits of clips and films about Project Orion. It was a kind of, dare I say, slightly wacky project to make very small atomic weapons that would fit in the base of a spaceship that would be ejected, exploded, push the spaceship up. Another one would be ejected, exploded, push the spaceship up. Watch this clip. So Project Orion, of course, uh, didn't really get off the ground, but it was novel. But the thing that came out of it was they had to build, to make the spaceship ejection system work, extremely small nuclear weapons. And this was a problem at the time, but they cracked it because they encased the nuclear weapons in tungsten, a very hard, lightweight and durable metal. Ha <laughs> ha! But it turns out there was a bizarre and incredibly important side effect of these tungsten encased tiny bombs. When they exploded, sure enough, there was a bang and radiation, but there was a massive electromagnetic pulse. Charged particles were ejected. There was some reaction with the tungsten metal. I don't understand it. If you do, please explain and I'll do an update. But tungsten encased mini bombs were the top.
So it turns out that they started on the Van Allen belt research again. The idea was to produce a shield that incoming ballistic missiles could get through, or it was a way of disrupting the um, electromagnetic spectrum for radio and radar waves of our enemy. And in a time of war, you would explode all these bombs up in the high Van Allen belt. It would produce a zone that the ballistic missiles, ballistic means that they take off, go out of the atmosphere, and then come back in this kind of classic shape and that um, they would at one time be up in the Van Allen belt and if it was so dangerous for the missile to be up there it might fail the electronics or even explode. So it turned out that with the new tungsten bombs, the tiny tungsten bombs, they did the project again. Project Starfish. Watch this! and understanding enlarged by this achievement, let us press onward in quest of man's essential desire for peace. As President of the United States, and with the advice and consent of the Senate, I now sign the instruments of ratification of this treaty. And this is where it gets a little personal. My darling wife lived on the island chain of Hawaii. And in the early 60s, this Van Allen belt experiment went slightly awry. <laughs> exploded a high atmospheric nuclear, possibly tungsten case bomb to make this pulse of energy in the Van Allen belts and it knocked out the power on Oahu. There's reports of streetlights in downtown Honolulu all going out. and telecommunication equipment failing over the island chain. Um, it was a long time ago. I don't know if any of you who live on Hawaii remember that happening, uh, but if you do, write to me and tell me the story of that fateful day. And isn't it strange how Hollywood often gets things right? In the film Phantom, starring David Duchovny, X X files there's a scene where a U.S. and Soviet um, agents talk about how the U.S. has made a Van Allen belt shield to stop USSR incoming ballistic missiles. Isn't it strange how Hollywood often gets it right?
And I would like to end this with an enormous thank you to a Patreon supporter, Jeremy Travis. Thank you, Jeremy, from Northwest London, my old home stamping ground, who is supporting this channel with a very generous amount. Thank you so much. It means a lot. When every kind of memory card costs over 30 bucks to make each film, because I like to keep them, um, this just means a lot to me and especially means a lot to Wallace and the rest of the animals at our little farm here in France. So if you feel so inclined to support the channel directly, watching the films is great. Remember subscriptions are totally free. If you sign up, ring the bell and you get sub uh, subscribed and notified when a new film comes out. It's free. Watch the films for free. Watch the adverts if you want. The more you watch, the more Google and ad pay send a tiny amount to me. Certainly not enough to pay for the films to be made. The best way to support any YouTube channel, mine or anybody else, is to go to sites like Patreon or PayPal and just, you know, send them five bucks or something because that really helps. So thank you, Jeremy, top man. And thank you all for watching and stay tuned because I'm going to keep making these because there's so much cool stuff out there. Because the truth is out there. Yeah.